In this lesson, we will create an X chart for individual measurements and calculate the warning and control limits and compare them with process capability requirements. And hello again to this lesson, which essentially has three learning objectives. What you see here is a quality control chart for individual measurements, also called X chart. By the end of this lesson, you should be familiar with the main elements of a control chart for individual measurements. You should also be able to calculate and interpret the warning and control limits for a given non-interference probability of 95 and 99 percent. Control limits are often also called action limits. However, we will use the term control limits. And you should understand how the warning and control limits differ from the specification limits given the process capability requirements. This lesson is divided into three chapters. Even if this was already part of the lesson on the general basics of quality control charts, the basics of an X chart will be gone through again in this first chapter as an introduction. In the second chapter, we will easily calculate the warning and control limits for a control chart for individual measurements. Then, based on the standard deviation and process location determined in the previous section, we will calculate specification limits for two different machine or process capability indices and compare them with the control limits. To be able to classify the X chart in comparison to the other quality charts, this picture shows the connection between the various characteristics and the control charts used. The different characteristics are shown on the left and the different control charts on the right. The quantitative characteristics shown on the left can be divided into two different categories. First, the variable characteristics. These are all characteristics that can be measured. They always have a value and a unit. Examples of this would be the length, hardness, weight, surface roughness or tensile strength of a component. Second, there are the attributive characteristics. Those are all characteristics that one can only count. But we don't want to go into detail about them here. On the right, we have the different control charts for variable characteristics with a white background. These are also called Schuhart charts, named after the American Walter Andrew Schuhart. As you can see, there are three control charts for monitoring the process location and two control charts for monitoring the variance. This means the spread of the values. The X chart is one of the location charts. Let's start with the construction of an X chart, which is a control chart for individual values. Let's take the diameter of this piston as an example. Its nominal size is 60.1 mm. The tolerance or the minimum or maximum dimension play no role in the calculation of the warning and control limits. Only in the last chapter, when we look at the process capabilities, they do become important again. The basic rule for a quality control chart is that it must be clearly assigned to a product and a process or machine. Significant or critical product characteristics must be marked as such. A process monitored with a control chart must be capable and in statistical control. The definitions of capable and in statistical control or stable have a lesson of their own. For the creation of the control chart, the assumption is that the measured values are randomly, normally distributed. The starting point for the calculations is the known data from an existing series production. If it is a new process, a pre-series production must be done. This is a production under series conditions 
for the purpose of data collection. More on that in the next chapter. The calculation method and the underlying statistical parameters are to be specified on the control chart. The values for the lower and upper warning limits, if any, and the values for the lower and upper control limits are to be documented. M is the mean value that results, for example, from the pre-series production. The mean is also referred to as the production mean, center line or process location. The scale for the measured variable must be chosen so it can also record values outside the control limits. The sample number should always be related to the measured values and, of course, sufficient measured values must be able to be recorded. So, after this brief repetition of the elements of a quality control chart, the calculation now begins in the next chapter. To be able to calculate the limits of a quality control chart, the process mean and the spread of the process to be monitored must already be known. If these are not available from an ongoing series production, a small batch of parts is manufactured specifically to determine this data. That's what this chapter is about. First, let's look at the formulas and symbols used. In general, the limits are calculated from the mean value, a factor or multiplier, and the standard deviation. As already mentioned, the purpose of the pre-series production is to determine the mean value and the standard deviation. We will take care of the other symbols in the formulas later. As part of the pre-series, 50 pistons were produced and their diameter measured. Their values were transferred to the control chart. As already mentioned, we assume that the values are normally distributed. If you visualize the data in a histogram, you can at least visually check whether the values are approximately normally distributed. The normally distributed envelope shown covers the distribution well to some extent. This should be for us sufficient proof of a normal distribution. The arithmetic mean can now be calculated from these values. For example, with the MS Excel function average. The mean value of the random sample is called X bar. Mu would be the population mean. Mu tilde, tilde is the head or roof over the X, is the same as X bar and indicates that it is only an estimate for the population based on a sample. The mean is the process location of the process. The standard deviation is a measure of the spread of the process. If you want to calculate the standard deviation of a sample using, for example, Excel, you use the function stdev.s. The standard deviation of a sample is abbreviated with a small s. The population standard deviation is abbreviated as sigma. Small s or sigma tilde are the estimates of the standard deviations for the populations based on a sample. Since we will need the values for the nominal size, the mean value and the spread more often, they have been entered in the header of the control chart. After this preparatory work has been done, now is the time to calculate the 95 and 99% control limits. Let's look again at the formulas and symbols used. We have just calculated the values for the mean and the standard deviation. The factors EC and EW are taken from tables, but can also be calculated using the standardized normal distribution. For those interested, there is a separate lesson for this, as this would lead too far here. 
So let's start with the step-by-step -step calculation of the different limits. The already known values for mu and sigma are given. Factors for EC and EW can be taken from tables for different non-interference probabilities. Usual non-interference probabilities for warning limits are 95% and for control limits 99%. So we work with the factor 1.96 for EW and 2.576 for EC and transfer these values to the header data of the control chart. However, factors of 2 and 3 are also very common. So let's put the values into the formula for the upper control limit. Then from the mean 60.11 plus 2.576 for EC times the standard deviation 0.03, we get the upper control limit. This is 60.19 mm and has already been drawn on the control chart on the right. Accordingly, we get the upper warning limit, UWL, from the mean value of 60.11 plus 1.96 for EW times the standard deviation of 0.03 mm. This results in an upper warning limit of 60.17 mm as also shown on the control chart on the right. We get the lower warning limit from the mean value of 60.11 minus 1.96 for EW times the standard deviation of 0.03 mm. This results in a lower warning limit of 60.05 mm. This is also shown on the control chart. Finally, for the lower control limit, LCL, equals the mean 60.11 minus 2.576 for EC times the standard deviation 0.03. This then results in a lower control limit of 60.03 mm. This is also shown on the control chart. The area between the lower and the upper warning limit has a white background. It can be assumed with a probability of 95% that the diameters of the pistons will be in this range. The control limits are wider and with a blue background. 99% of the diameters of the manufactured pistons will probably be in this range if the process is in control. The probability that a value is outside the control limits is therefore less than 1%. If one of the control limits is exceeded by a value, this means it is outside the control limits, this is an indication of an out-of-control process. A readjustment of the process may be necessary. For the calculations in this section, we use the data from the previous example. So the already known mean, mu, with 60.11 mm, and the standard deviation S of 0.03 mm. In the following, we start from the formula for the critical process capability. The piston shown here should serve as an example for the following calculations. This has a nominal size of 60.1 mm with a tolerance of plus minus 0.16. This results in a minimum dimension of 59.94 mm and a maximum dimension of 60.26. If the tolerance was irrelevant when calculating the control limits, it plays a significant role in the calculation of the process capabilities. This whole effort is usually only made for characteristics that are of high importance. Characteristics are always of great importance when non-compliance can have significant negative consequences. These would be, for example, endangering human life, 
violations of laws, significant customer irritation or a production standstill. Characteristics of particular importance can be identified, for example, by an FMEA, a failure mode and effects analysis. Since we want to calculate the specification limits of the piston for a given process capability and known values for mu and s, the formulas for the critical process capability index must be transposed as has been done here. Thus, for the upper specification limit, USL is equal to x bar plus CPK times 3 times S. Correspondingly, LSL is equal to x bar minus CPK times 3 times S. The specification limits are now to be calculated once for a process capability of 1.33 and once for 1.67. Both are common values for characteristics of special importance. Now we simply insert the values into the corresponding formulas. For a process capability index of 1.67, the upper and lower specification limits are 60.26 and 59.96 mm respectively. These were included in the control chart. For the process to have a process capability of 1.67 under the conditions discussed here, the specification limits must be 60.26 and 59.96 mm. This would mean that there is a 99.999% probability that all piston diameters will be within the specification limits. The control limits are 0.07 mm before the specification limits. That is, so to speak, the safety margin of the control limits to the specification limits. The warning limits are even 0.09 mm apart. The same applies to a process capability index of 1.33 instead of 1.67. Due to the lower requirement, the specification limits can be narrowed down here. For a process capability index of 1.33, values of 60.23 and 59.99 mm are obtained for the upper and lower specification limits. This would mean that there is a 99.99% probability that all piston diameters will be within the specification limits. In conclusion, it can be summarized that the greater the required process capability, the further apart the specification limits are if the spread remains the same. The warning limits have a safety margin to the control limits and the control limits have a safety margin to the specification limits. Well, that was a lot of new information. Therefore, I would like to conclude by repeating the four most important key messages. 95% of the measured values will be between the lower and upper warning limits. The non-interference probability for the control or action limits is 99%. This is plus minus 2.58 times the standard deviation. The warning limits can also be at plus minus 2 times the standard deviation and the control limits at plus minus 3 times the standard deviation. And if a value is outside the control limits, the process must be readjusted. If you found this lesson helpful, please let me know and leave a comment. Thank you for that, take care and see you next time. Bye!